The United States has urged India to distance itself from Russia. Global pressure to condemn Moscow's invasion is mounting, but New Delhi has been reluctant to do so. James Crabtree, Executive Director at the International Institute for Strategic Studies, joins us live. Mr. Crabtree, U.S. pressure on India, you could argue it's a dangerous failure to appreciate that Delhi's core interests do not and cannot align with Washington's core interests. Washington's been pushing New Delhi only very gently in public. I think there has been some disappointment that India refused to go along with the Western countries in the United Nations. Um, if there has been any naivety, as you say, it's that there is an overlap between the United States, Europe and India with respect to China, but that overlap only goes so far. India has a long relationship with Russia and it isn't yet ready to decide that it will take the side of its new friends in, in the United States and Europe over every issue, including this one. Well, James, that balancing act notwithstanding, if this conflict in Ukraine becomes prolonged, if it perhaps creates a bipolar geopolitical situation globally, India's foreign policy is going to be severely tested in that scenario. Is this going to be a problem that Narendra Modi can just simply leave to solve for another day? India's main problem is that it relies on Russia for arms. Almost half of its weapons imports uh, come from Russia. And so it's stuck between Russia on the one hand and China on the other. It's worried that China might attack it in the Himalayas or cause other problems. And then if that happened, it would need all of those Russian weapons uh, in order to fight back. And so it doesn't want to distance itself from Russia too much. Uh, is this a problem they can put off for another day? A little bit. I mean, what they will try and do is lessen their relationship with Russia over time, I think, because sensible people in Delhi recognize that you can't be as close to Russia today as they have been historically if Russia is going to behave in the way that it has over the previous few weeks. Mr. Crabtree, of course, the problem is that India if it wants to balance or uh, contain China, it needs not just Russian arms, it also needs Washington support. So we've got the Quad meeting starting in about one and a half hours' time, uh, trying to, to come up with a united front on what's happening in Ukraine. Looking ahead to this Quad meeting, do you see enough pressure being placed on India for any substantial kind of statement coming out of this? I think probably not, not of the sort that the United States or Australia or Japan, the other three Quad members, would want to see. Uh, but it, the, the reporting today did suggest that India uh, had been one of those pushing for this Quad meeting. And so there are wider issues at play here. It's not just Ukraine. There's also what might be happening in Taiwan uh, as this Ukraine crisis is unfolding. Um, so I think what you're going to see is there is a considerable overlap between the Quad countries, the European countries, um, but, but not in every position. And I think that's just something that everyone's going to have to learn to live with. Well, at the same time, though, James, defense supplies uh, and the relationship between uh, India and Russia that you mentioned before in terms of weapons supplies and so on, that matters to India. But so might the optics of the 12,000 Indian nationals who remain in Ukraine, who must be evacuated. We know that Prime Minister Modi has held several meetings with officials about their evacuation. He also said uh, in, a, in a rally, at an elections rally in Uttar Pradesh, that and I'm going to quote him here, that the country was able to evacuate its citizens, citizens from Ukraine because of India's rising power in the world, a, a kind of a boast almost. What should we read into that statement, coming as it does during these important state elections? There are two things going on. India, as with all countries, is concerned about its own citizens. And so this has overwhelmingly been the focus of Indian attention. One Indian was killed a couple of days ago. Um, and as you say, there are tens of thousands of Indians who need to be evacuated. But there's a bigger issue of principle here, which is that if you're an American or a German or a, someone from Japan or Australia, you see in the Ukraine crisis uh, a threat to the way the world is currently organized, and that has been a way that the world has been organized that's been backed up by the US. Actually, India doesn't mind that change too much. It, it, it isn't too bothered about a shift from a world that's dominated by the United States to one that is multipolar in which many big powers have a have a place. So that's the, the tension in India's position. It's friends with the United States and Europe increasingly. 
But actually, there's a little bit of the worldview of China and Russia that it also shares, that it, it would be perfectly happy with a new world in which uh, big countries had more power and the United States had a little bit less power. Well, thanks for joining us. James Crabtree, Executive Director at the International Institute for Strategic Studies.